Today I'm going to run down Baby Blue by Bad Finger, of course, one of my favorite Bad Finger songs. And uh, as a note, I'm in standard tuning, but I'm capoed at the second fret. The song is actually played in B, which I'll explain in just a second, but I am in standard tuning again and capo at the second fret. So what I'm basically covering in this lesson is the rhythm guitar part, although I will be combining a few of the electric moments with it, as I always like to do, to make it nice and playable on one guitar. I'll probably do the solo as well and the uh, little outro licks that are there, but I'll do that in a separate video. So uh, if you want to just shoot ahead to the song, you'll find it right there, okay? But let me explain the capo. Uh, a student of mine recently in my private instruction wanted to learn this song on acoustic guitar and wanted to sing it as well, but the bridge is a little too high for him. So what I did was I transposed the song to the key of A, and now he can sing the bridge <laughs> with ease. But a few weeks later, he came back and said, hey man, I think I can sing that high part now. Can you show me how to play the song in the key of B? So I said, just put the capo on the second fret and go for it. We tried it and it sounded really good. <laughs> I liked the way it sounded because it provides you with a lot more open chords. Which is kind of nice if you're just playing it on acoustic guitar by yourself. So that's the explanation for the capo. And the upside of that is if you like to sing yourself and it's a little too high for you, you can just move the capo to the first fret or take it off altogether. The chords that I'm showing you will remain the same. So let's dive into the song. Here we go with Baby Blue. So let's just talk about that right there uh, out the gate and then we'll carry on from there. So first off we've got an A chord, a standard A, and I'm doing this the three finger style so that I can hear that uh, first string, that E string open. And so what we've got is this rhythm. So I'm doing that all with down strokes. You can do it with alternate strokes if you want, but I think it sounds a little stronger with down strokes. And then we have so I'm just putting my pinky onto the third fret, third fret from the capo on the B string, on and off. And you can approach that with up, down, up, down strokes. Up, down, up, down, up, etc. And then come back and do those same down strokes. Down, down, down. So that's your opening chord, the A. And then we play that cool little lick right there. You can see the tab up on the screen, but I'll play it very slowly for you. And even though you can use alternate strokes, I think downstroke sounds a little bit more consistent and more like the uh, recording. It just sounds kind of nice with the chord. So uh, after that we land an E chord and what we want to do is just alternate strokes but capture those accents. That type of feel with the alternate strokes. As you can see, I went to a D chord, but let's talk about how that's played. Again, you're just playing regular alternate strokes, but you're accenting the first stroke, and then that up stroke and that down stroke. So again, it's... So you can see I played it twice on the E and then once on the D. So 
So again, you can see that on the tab, but I'll play it nice and slow so you can see it. These are three note uh, little arpeggiated chords. And for the picking, I'm using down, down, up, up, down, down, up, up. I think that makes them sound uh, nice and round and even. So again, coming off of that D chord. And there you have it. And then we move to a G chord, same strumming, same accents. So you can see each of those chords was played with one of the strumming cycles. And then return to the riff. And then you're going to repeat all of that, okay? So let me play that all nice and slow right from the intro. So as you can see, when I hit that E chord the second time through, we added another lick to it. So coming off of that A chord, before we get to that E, we have... So you strum out the E the regular way, and then we play this lick. And you can use whatever fingers you want for that, but I think that's good. That's good scale practice uh, to uh, keep it one finger per fret. So once again. And then I went to a B minor, same strumming pattern. And this is kind of uh, wicked right here, but if you can catch this, this is the best way to do it. Just bring your pinky up to the fifth fret from the capo, and then that turns that B minor into a D major. to repeat all of that again. So let's talk about what happens from that B minor to the D major. So once again, we have the regular strumming pattern. Put the pinky in. And then we're going to have this arpeggio. So uh, it's all inside the chord, as you can see, up until the very end when you bring the pinky all the way down to the first E string. So you can see it up on the screen, but let me play that arpeggio nice and slow for you. So what happens there in the picking hand is I'm going down, 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 up, up, down, up, up, down, up, up. Okay, so again, coming from that B minor chord we have... You can see I went right back to the intro and then we're going to repeat all of that even right through that arpeggio okay and then we move to the bridge of the song so as I said moving into the bridge we come right out of this part so we play all of that and then we move right into the bridge and on the bridge, we've got this C-sharp minor chord. You can see the chord up on the screen. And you want to play these very staccato. 
So make sure you mute tightly in between. You can also pop the chord, which gives you an even tighter staccato sound. So we want to play the C sharp four times, then move to F sharp minor, and then we shift the ring finger from the fourth to the third fret, which creates an F sharp augmented flat nine. Believe it or not, <laughs> the name is way more serious than the chord. And that's played four times as well. So from the C sharp we have and then we move to a B minor at the second fret. The exact same shape as the C sharp minor four times as well. And then all you have to do for this next chord is bring your first finger down toward your feet to where it's just barring the first four strings. Take your pinky off, but you do want to pick it from the open A string. And we get an inverted D chord with an A in the bass, which sounds really nice coming off of that B minor. So that whole chord progression then is... Sounds quite nice, very uh, Beatle-ish, if you will. And then we move to... And you're going to repeat the chords for the bridge, okay? So what I did was I moved to G with that same strumming. We've already covered the same accents, everything. So it was G to D to A and uh, complete with the lick. So we move back to C sharp minor again and play through all of those chords again, but only up to the D chord. And then it goes into the guitar solo, which has a different set of changes underneath. So the second time through, we would play. And then it goes right into the uh, guitar solo. So let me play the entire bridge for you and uh, we'll put the pieces of the puzzle together. And then we go into the uh, guitar solo, and the chords underneath the solo are C. I like to play it with the G and the bass there, but you can just play a regular C chord. C, G, D, A. So the strumming on that, we played it twice, of course, and the strumming on that is down, up, down, up, up, down. Although, as always, just keep your, uh, your wrist swinging. Park it on A the second time, and then we travel on from there. And then it's straight back to a verse, starting with the E chord, and it's a double verse. All the verses are doubles, okay? And then we move into the ending of the song. So after the solo, we return to the verse, as I say, and we play the full thing.
when we hit that last A chord right there coming out of this part, we move to an arpeggiation of the ending chords and they're played like so. So we have A, B minor, a passing chord, which I'll explain, then G, D, A. So the arpeggiation on that, on the first chord A is... So I'm playing down, 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 up, up, down, up, down, 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 up, up, down, up. And you can kind of end the arpeggio right there if you want. You kind of hear that on the recording. And then we move to a B minor, same picking pattern, but just one time, and then we play. You can see that up on the tab, down, down, up, up, down, down, up, up. Now, on the recording, it actually sounds to me like they just drop that B note and then make their way to the G, but playing it on guitar by yourself, it's kind of nice to fill that in, okay? And for that G chord, all I'm doing is fretting the third fret on the sixth string. And we're skipping a string in the right hand, we're skipping the A string, but it's still the same picking pattern. Then we move to a D chord. And finally land a full A chord to end it. So that entire ending is played like this. So there you go with Baby Blue by Bad Finger, uh, a nice little way to play it on acoustic guitar by itself. And like I said, I'll probably do uh, the guitar solo in a different video, and it's got uh, some licks at the end of it as well. So I hope you enjoyed it. All the best to everyone as always, and uh, we'll see you in the next video.